Uh, good morning. My name is Jim Galloway. I'm the, this year's chair of the chamber, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to Wake Up to UND. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, the chamber's been hosting this event since, I think, about 2005. And on behalf of the nearly 1,000 uh, members of the chamber, we're pleased uh, to host this annual e e breakfast. Um, I'd like to thank the sponsors. There's a, a list on your table of the various sponsors who make, uh, whose contributions make this possible. There's presidential sponsors, the Greater Grand Forks Visitors Bureau, JLG Architects, UND School of Engineering, Academic sponsors, AE2S, Alaris Financial, All True Health System, Bremer Bank, Sanford Health, UND Alumni Association and Foundation, XL Energy, and our campus sponsors, Construction Engineers, EAPC Architects and Engineers, Branston Bank and Trust, Gate City Bank, and Northland Community College and uh, Community and Technical College. Thank our sponsors. Uh, I have been asked uh, to make an announcement if uh, you parked in the ramp and you did not get a parking validation, um, you can either make that $20 donation to the university on your way out or you can pick up a validation card at the registration table, um, your choice. Um, uh, as the chamber, um, we, we believe the link between the, the uh, the business community in the university is as critical today as it was back in 1883 when the university was founded and the uh, uh, chamber started in 1904. Um, since that time, the town and gown relationship has continued to grow stronger and stronger. Uh, I am especially appreciative of President Kelly and his wife, Marcia, for their active involvement in our community uh, far beyond the, the boundaries of the, of the university. Um, I'd like to thank them for their many civic uh, activities they're engaged in. Um, president Kelly began serving as UND's 11th president on July 1st, 2008, which makes this his fourth uh, wake up to UND breakfast. But before uh, President Kelly's address about exceptional UND, please turn to the screen. And our program begins today with the spirit of our campus. It's that spirit that drives exceptional UND.
Please welcome the President of the University of North Dakota, Dr. Robert Kelly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you and uh, good morning and welcome to the Memorial Union here at the University of North Dakota. If I was as smart as people tell me I am, I would sit down right now after this video because I think this says everything about the University of North Dakota. It's energy, it's vibrance, it's excellence, it's vitality. Uh, this was just a very wonderful uh, experience for all of you to watch and I thank the folks that, uh, that put this together. Jim, thanks for that introduction, very, very generous. I want to thank you for all that you do for the university, uh, the city, and uh, the state of North Dakota. We certainly appreciate the working relationship that we have with you, Jim, and your partner, Lonnie Lafine, and all of the folks at JLG. They've demonstrated a real leadership uh, designing our buildings on campus, uh, designing for environmental efficiencies, sustainability. Uh, you, well, JLG was the lead firm on our education building uh, project that we just uh, finished and are using now. We'll invite you some time to walk through it. I'm going to show you a video about that in just a few minutes. Um, it's important that this building was designed to lead standards. Uh, this is the energy efficiency and sustainability gold standard now. Uh, we are going to be building another building on campus, our alumni center, and just a, uh, it's under construction now. The big hole that you see just west of the Chester Fritz Auditorium is our uh, new alumni center, and it's also going to be built to a LEED standard, and we're going for the highest, the LEED Platinum standard on the new alumni center. So I want to thank Jim and Lonnie and all of the folks at JLG. Thank you for your partnership with the university. We are powered by green. Go green. Thanks to Barry in the chamber for your partnership for hosting this event. Uh, thanks to all of our sponsors. This uh, Wake Up to UND has become an annual opportunity for me to share with you some of the things that are happening here at the university. Last year, for example, we talked a lot about our partnerships. I'll mention those again this morning. Uh, we also ignited the spirit last year uh, on the same day that we announced the public portion, the opening of our uh, North Dakota spirit, the campaign for UND. Uh, now this development effort uh, will benefit all of our passionate students, our inspirational educators, uh, all of our partnerships, um, our innovative programs, and our extraordinary facilities, our buildings on this beautiful campus. When we kicked off the campaign last year, we noted that the UND Foundation had already raised over just over, just over $200 million during the silent phase of the campaign. Uh, one year and four days later, today, we have more than $236 million. We're well on our way to the goal of $300 million for the endowment for UND. Uh, to those of you who have con contributed to the campaign, uh, either through your businesses or individually, uh, through your time, talent, treasure, Thank you. Uh, this is important to the long-term sustainability of our university. I want to thank, too, the hard work of our Alumni Association and Foundation for everything that they do for the University of North Dakota. I also want to thank Marsha Kelly, <coughs> UND's First Lady. Marsha is UND's lead volunteer. Her schedule every day is just about as full as mine is. And we both want to say thanks uh, to, for the welcome that you continue to extend to us. We're well into our fourth year on campus. You've made us feel very much at home, and we thank you for that. Would you also join me in thanking our musicians, uh, Simona Barbu on cello, uh, Alejandro Draga on violin, Nariaki Segura on piano. Might mention that Simona is our new Burgum Chair in music, the recipient, the professor for the Burgum Chair, and we thank Rick and Jody for their generous North Dakota spirit. And how about a round of applause for our catering staff uh, for this great breakfast? <laughs> and again, I want to say thanks to all of you for all of the support that you bring to the University of North Dakota, the exceptional UND. And I'm going to be emphasizing that theme as we go forward. Mayor Mike Brown couldn't be with us this morning. I was going to tease him just a little bit, but I will say that he continues to be extraordinarily supportive. At the last city council meeting, the mayor declared Friday, October 21st, next Friday, as Get Your Green On Day. Uh, Get Your Green On is the theme for this year's UND homecoming. 
so I invite all of you to join us at the Alaris Center uh, next Friday, October 21st, for a community homecoming party. And wear your green. Encourage your coworkers and employees who bleed green to get their green on and help us celebrate through a show of community support for the University of North Dakota. Now the partnership that we enjoy with Grand Forks is truly remarkable. The Grand Forks City Council supports UND's activities and in turn UND tries to do everything it can to build a stronger Grand Forks. I'm happy to say that our students do a great deal of the work for this. Let me mention the big event that we do every spring during which students go to work to do whatever they can to help the citizens of Grand Forks. UND also enjoys substantial support, positive relationships with many partners in the community and in the state. <clears throat> I've mentioned the Chamber, the Convention and Visitors Bureau. By the way, have you noticed these uh, welcome back students that the Visitors Bureau put all around town? Thank you for that. We enjoy working with the Grand Forks Air Force Base, the Grand Forks County Commission, East Grand Forks. I see colleagues from Northland Community and Technical College. UND also benefits from the governance and oversight of the North Dakota State Board of Higher Education. I believe I saw at least two members of the board, possibly three if Janice is here this morning. We also benefit from the oversight of the North Dakota University system. And UND would not succeed without the support of the North Dakota legislature, the governor, the congressional delegation in Washington. Thanks to all of you. <clears throat> you continue to support UND's vision of higher education for North Dakota and as a state asset that benefits our quality of life. Well now today I want to tell you a little bit about our university, your university, <clears throat> about how our students, our faculty, our staff are focused on building an exceptional UND. We have a clear vision for our future and we are on the right trajectory, I firmly believe, to achieve that vision. I believe that our future is very exciting. You see our present from our video. I can only imagine what the next decade will hold for this university. UND continues to address issues such as affordability, access, cost containment, efficiencies in the operation of the university. And we continue to develop innovative ways to deliver ever more advanced levels of education to our students, including novel applications through advanced technologies. And there are some challenges ahead. I want to talk a bit about these, uh, but first let's take a look at our core mission and how and where we are uh, as a university right now. UND's core mission <clears throat> embraces the concept of student-centered teaching and learning, research, scholarship, creative activity, and public service and engagement. This is what this university is all about. These are our priorities, student-centered teaching and learning. The university was founded on the principle that an outstanding liberal arts education leads to successful citizenship. And this foundation is still in place. Today, UND is a Carnegie High Research Activity University that makes a difference in the economies of our state and our nation and in the lives of our graduates and our students. UND enjoys an international reputation for its academic and its scholarly work. The university benefits from a first-class faculty, expert, knowledgeable staff, bright, creative students, and a strong commitment to the entrepreneurial spirit of our community and our state. And through all of this, we contribute to the common good for the people of North Dakota. In fact, we do it so well that we have been recognized by the Carnegie Foundation for the advancement of teaching by being named one of 115 universities nationwide that have been added to the organization's community engagement classification. Let me illustrate this with three very quick examples, all related to Minot. In September, more than 70 of our students got up very early one morning, boarded a UND student government funded bus, traveled to the Magic City, and spent a full Sunday working with Minot State University students to help clean up and repair flood damaged homes. Just last week, you may have read about a special t-shirt campaign spearheaded by UND Athletics, generated over $21,600 for victims of flooding in Minot and elsewhere in the state. And still to come is a fundraising basketball game should be played soon to provide additional funds to help the people of Minot. So through a steadfast commitment to its core mission, UND continues to help build a better North Dakota. 
Now, as I visit with business leaders across the state, I consistently hear the need for an educated workforce. UND is preparing that workforce. The university produces individuals with excellent communication skills. They are prepared to think critically, and they're experienced in finding solutions to a variety of state, local, government, and industry problems. UND's Essential Studies curriculum becomes the foundation for health professions, business, industry, education, law, and all of the STEM disciplines, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, in addition to the arts and humanities. And I want to, want to point out that our students are finding jobs, and they are being hired. They are staying in North Dakota. According to the most recent report that we have, 67% of our recent graduates stayed in the state to work, develop their careers, and grow their families. <clears throat> UND students, I like to say, are prepared for prime time when they leave our campus. I'll give you a couple of examples. Ty Boyle, and I think that's Ty right there. I'm cross-country skiing. Ty Boyle, recent graduate, he was our Phi Beta Kappa nose guard on last year's football team, is now on the advanced staff of the Vice President of the United States, Mr. Biden. Ty's going to go to law school next year. Well, let me tell you about Evan Andrews. Evan was a recent graduate from the School of Engineering and Mines. Uh, he was hired by a regional engineering firm, found himself negotiating with colleagues in Shanghai, China, within a month of graduation last May. We're very proud of our students. They're well prepared to take their place in the world. They're ready for prime time. So where are we now? UND is experiencing a record enrollment of almost 14,700 students, 14,697 to be exact. Our students come from all 50 states, more than 50 countries around the globe. Our new students are just about half and half men and women, 51% men, 49% women. They have an ACT composite score of 23.4, an average high school GPA of 3.26. 172 are presidential scholars, 97% of the entering class is between 18 and 19 years of age. 77% of last year's class continued into their sophomore year at UND. Overall graduate enrollment is up 4%, 2,673 students. So I want to congratulate the faculty and staff in enrollment services, the graduate school, distance education, aerospace, schools of law, medicine, health sciences, all of the units who go out of their way every day to recruit students. There are many faculty and staff who among their other primary responsibilities put in a lot of extra time in recruitment. Their hard work is clearly paying off. Well, let me introduce, if you haven't met her already, Dr. Lori Reeser, our new Vice President for Student Affairs. Lori, where are you? Just raise your hand or stand up. Thank you. <clears throat> Lori came on board in February. Uh, she's immediately become a dynamic part of our leadership team. If you don't know, know Lori yet, please uh, walk up to her and say hi at the end of our breakfast this morning. She wants very much to find ways to connect the university with all of you in the community. Now, I thought I saw Bob Boyd a little bit earlier. Uh, Bob, I, uh, you retired earlier from uh, Lori's position. I already said a whole bunch of nice things about you at uh, your retirement dinner, but I still want to say thanks for your continued commitment to, uh, to North Dakota. Let me make an additional point about enrollment, Once I, one I've made many times in previous talks. I do believe right now that the overall numbers in our enrollment are just about right for the carrying capacity of our university. So now the challenge before us is not so much quantity, but to continue to focus on ever greater quality within the university. Now, of course, we will need to sustain our enrollment numbers. But of greater importance for the long term must be an emphasis on continually enhancing the quality of the academic programs, the quality of our research competitiveness, our creative and scholarly opportunities for our students and our faculty, and the application of that learning to continue the university's role in building a better North Dakota. Let me give you a few numbers here just to let you know that UND takes this last responsibility pretty seriously. Now, led by Vice President for Research and Economic Development, Dr. Phyllis Johnson, who provides leadership for research, scholarly, and creative activity on campus, 
UND's revenues from research activities, from all grants and contracts, has been hovering at about the $100 million a year range. In 2010, that translated into a state and economic, a regional economic impact of nearly $218 million. Overall, all resources, all expenditures, UND has an economic impact of more than $1 billion for our city, our state, and our region, according to the latest North Dakota State University System report. That report cites that the direct impact of student spending in the Grand Forks area is about $104.3 million as of 2009. The total economic impact of student spending was $259 million. The report says that these levels of business activity would generate an additional $5.4 million in sales and use tax revenue and nearly $1 million more in personal income tax collections. This level of student spending alone would create enough business activity to support 1,200 secondary jobs in the community. So, and this is really my only point, UND's faculty, staff, and students are significant contributors to the vibrant economy of our city and our state. Let me say a few words about the state's very important role in our collective partnership. As you know, the North Dakota legislature met earlier this year, passed a number of bills that affect funding for UND, including the separately appropriated School of Medicine and Health Sciences. I want to thank North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple for his budget recommendations and for the State Board of Higher Education for its support and the members of the North Dakota Legislature for their appropriations in support of the University of North Dakota. In the first year of a new fiscal biennium, UND's annual budget from all sources is almost $460 million. Approximately 23% comes from state appropriated dollars. This level of state funding is generous, and again, I say thank you. The rest of our funding comes from tuition and fees, about 29%, while another 22% is derived from grants and contracts. I gratefully acknowledge the work of our congressional delegation, Senators Conrad, Hoven, Congressman Rick Berg, and their predecessors, former Senator Byron Dorgan and Congressman Earl Pomeroy, UND's success in competing for grants and contracts also as a function of the productive relationships that the university has with federal and state agencies and with representatives of the private sector. The remaining 26% of our revenues comes from a variety of sources, including auxiliary enterprises and gifts to the university. I want to thank Vice President for Operations and Finance, Alice Brecky, for managing all of these revenue streams and for keeping UND in the black. Well, I have you thinking about the legislature for just a moment. Let me mention two other significant appropriations that will benefit UND and our state in the coming years. The first is a $12.5 million appropriation for a North Dakota University system IT building. It's to be situated, located here on the campus of UND. The legislature also authorized spending another $5 million from existing resources on that project if those funds can be identified. A committee with representatives from across the North Dakota University system is being chaired by UND's Chief Information Officer, Dr. Josh Reedy. And Josh's group is tasked with planning a state-of-the-art hosting facility that will be the first of its kind in North Dakota. When finished, the facility will serve as the hub for all IT services delivered across the university system. And the second significant appropriation, $6.9 million in new funding for the biennium went to the UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences. You'll recall that Dr. Josh Wynn, our Vice President for Health Affairs, had proposed funding for ramping up the number of medical doctors we educate and graduate each year, as well as funding a health sciences building uh, that building wasn't funded, but the legislature did appropriate $100,000 to complete a formal space study during the interim. The legislature also appropriated just over $1.2 million for a master's degree in public health. These funds will be shared equally with North Dakota State University. If all goes according to plan, a short year from now, we'll see the start of the inaugural class of students in the new MPH program. This is a joint venture between UND and NDSU. The integrated program will take the best of the two institutions and combine them into a unique and new opportunity for advanced public health education previously unavailable in North Dakota. 
The UND effort has been coordinated through the School of Medicine and Health Sciences, while that of NDSU has been through the College of Pharmacy, Nursing, and Allied Health Sciences. We here at UND have found our colleagues at North Dakota State University, from my friend and colleague, President Dean Bershani on down, to be enthusiastic and cooperative partners in this unprecedented new venture. So I hope I'm convincing, convincing you that we have an excellent university. We have, we might say, an exceptional university. What does that mean, exceptional? I'm kind of fascinated by, by the word. Um, I read a book several years ago by Jim Collins, uh, From Good to Great. Well, we already have a great institution, so uh, I believe UND is already there. So what comes next? Well, to play off of Collins' ideas, uh, why not great to exceptional? Now, you can look up exceptional in the dictionary. It means somewhat out of the norm, surpassing what is uncommon or usual or expected. I think that's exactly the vision of this university that we share. And being a person who kind of likes words, I thought, let's dig out the thesaurus and see what else is there. Words came up like remarkable, extraordinary, outstanding, unparalleled, unsurpassed. Let me add undefeated. <laughs> I like that because U and D are the first three letters of that word. I think you get the idea. Last year, we began a campus-wide conversation to talk about how we can move toward an exceptional UND. Now, through the shared leadership uh, with our provost and vice president for academic affairs, Paul Lavelle, we had almost 50 meetings, workshops, town hall meetings, involving 600 faculty, staff, and students. We heard from the collective campus about how we should continue to create this shared vision, something I believe that the campus is embracing. So what do we collectively believe are the most important priorities upon which to focus our exceptional UND plan? And you see them on the banners here behind me. Encouraging the student learning experience, encouraging gathering, facilitating collaboration, expanding UND's presence, and enhancing the quality of life for faculty, staff, and the university community. Let me take a brief but closer look at these, uh, these priorities. The first is enriching the student learning experience. All of these priorities seem self-explanatory, but what do we mean by enriching the learning experience? I'm gonna show you a video here in just a moment that will let you see exactly what we mean by enhancing the learning experience. Led by Provost, Provost LaBelle, UND is making a major investment also in retention graduation initiatives while we innovate in providing a high quality educational experience with personalized attention to our students. We use what we might call an early warning and intervention system to work with students that are having a little difficulty with their classes as they get started. We're piloting innovative first year experience seminars in which new students engage faculty and each other in collaborative, enriched learning opportunities. They use simulations and opportunities to conduct real-world research. All of these activities position UND among the leaders of American research universities in innovative undergraduate education. Well, I'm gonna show you one of these innovative seminars here on the screen. <clears throat> it's called The Call of Duty, Experiencing the Past, Exploring the Future. It's taught by professors Melissa Jelstad and Deborah Worley. Now keep in mind that the students that you're going to see on this video are first year students. They are freshmen. So as we watch the video, consider what Professors Jelstad and Worley have put together. Exciting. Unexpected, but in the best way possible. Innovative. Awesome. Student initiative. We have uh, a substantial number of faculty members who are very excited about learning and teaching. They're really outgoing and like, they're easy to talk to. We have in goals or objectives in mind for what we want them to be able to do when they finish this course. It's a fun leap to be able to see them driving the class in this way. I think it's great, it's liberating. Well, these people are just coming in. They aren't going to own land right away, so we're basically- Basically at the beginning, everyone was just kind of like, 
didn't exactly know what to expect. I always just like let people have their way, so I was nervous. Engagement is the single most significant factor in predicting student retention, persistence, and degree completion. Basically, that's what this bill says, correct? 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 correct. We're helping students learn and learning in the process about democracy in Athens in 403 BC by role playing. The best part of this class is when you end up winning a debate. Within the people's hearts, within the people's minds. We have one who just argues everything, anybody says. Just like in real democracy, I guess, there's a lot of arguing, a lot of going back and forth, there's a lot of like schoolyard politics. For today's topic, we are going to be talking about um, limiting. The there's chaos, frustration, anger. Um, votes are close. Eight? No. This class basically teaches you how to be an active participant. I'm a quieter person and it's harder for me to speak up in class, but like in this class I have no problem. You're supposed to get into your role and that's the fun in the class. We also pass notes to encourage uh, different factions to speak up. It teaches you how to build relationships with people who you wouldn't necessarily think that you could agree with. You have to come up with a way to form that bridge and to reach out and really compromise with people. I think UND has a unique opportunity to engage students from the time they set foot on our campus. They have a right to speak in the class, their opinion matters, and in this case, in the role playing, to be able to ha help them to see and remind them that individuals can change history. So there are different ways to do this. The important thing is that we do it. Well, Melissa and Deborah, I have to tell you, if I could do my career over again, I'd start this way with the two of you back there. Thank you for uh, all that you do for the university. Let me move to another priority for just a moment, to encourage gathering, just exactly what we are doing here this morning. I think it's important to the life of the university that we find ways to continue to enhance gathering. And we define that word very, very broadly. This is where our relationships develop. This is where networking develops. This assures our students' success for tomorrow. The Memorial Union is one of the finest places on campus to gather, but this is by no means the only place where we can bring our students together. You're going to see a video in just a moment of the new College of Education building, and I think you're going to get a sense there of how well a facility enhances coming together for gathering. We are taking a hard look at our Chester Fritz Library. The Chester Fritz now is 50 years old. We're celebrating the Chester Fritz Library. We are starting to think about the idea of a learning commons on this campus. Where do you go to gather, to learn? Obviously, we're not going to have just one place on campus, but the core to that mission will be the Chester Fritz Library, a learning commons. I'm personally very, very excited about the coming Goretzky Alumni Center. The first floor of that, which will, the building will house our alumni uh, group and our foundation uh, staff, but the first floor of that is going to be a gathering place. We are planning to position our enrollment management and admission staff there. We will have the home of the University of UND ambassadors there. This will be the gateway for visitors into our campus. It will be very clear where to come on this campus so you can be introduced and guided to where you need to be on the campus. And I want to thank uh, Tim O'Keefe and the Alumni Center staff for helping work with the university on developing what I think is going to be a marvelous asset for gathering on this campus. Another priority is collaboration. How do we facilitate collaboration as a strategic priority on our campus? I've been talking about this since I came to UND. Uh, more often in the context of creating more horizontal connections, we talk about silos. How do you connect punch holes in the walls of the silos and start connecting the strengths that are housed within those individual disciplines? We are already starting to see research clusters developing our, on our campus, spanning across colleges, spanning across departments. We see this in the neurosciences. I recently had a demonstration from our digital humanities group that spans at least three of the colleges on campus, developing uh, electronic music uh, set to visual arts, developing uh, digital games that are set to human performance. Just a very exciting uh, set of outcomes from that cluster. Energy engineering is becoming a field that has strength on our campus, but it spans out of engineering across into arts and sciences, into the health professions, nursing, a very, very energetic collaboration that's developing. 
In the news recently has been our increased activities in unmanned aviation systems. I don't think it takes very much imagination to see how collaboration is so important there. You've got a human performance element, you have the technology element, you have the psychology elements, uh, so many things that will help us in collaboration there. And I don't get me started on STEM collaboration, sciences, technology, engineering, mathematics across this campus penetrates and collaborates across the university in virtually every college and every department. Another priority is to expand our presence, not only within our individual communities, but our external communities and the state. Locally, we're doing several things to expand our presence. Uh, we're cooperating, collaborating very fully with the Choice Wellness uh, Center, the new center. That's going to be the home of our UND tennis program. Very pleased to see more and more exhibits and uh, gallery expositions from our Department of Art and Design down in the Empire Arts Theater. The School of Medicine and Health Sciences Forensic Laboratory has just been completed, is now open down by the old Aurora, now the Doctors Medical Complex. We have residency programs around the state in our major cities. The Center of Excellence for UAS UAV out at the Grand Forks Air Force Base is a tremendous presence for the university on that facility. And I'll bet you didn't know that our hockey team reads to the children at the Grand Forks Public Library. Did you know that the hockey team could read? <laughs> I should also mention that we're in the early stages of creating a new vice president for university and public relations, developing and maintaining these relationships locally, regionally, statewide will be a significant portion of that individual's portfolio as we move to expand UND's presence. And then there's the quality of life issue. How do we prioritize the quality of life for those who work and live breathe with the university. As I've said before, an exceptional UND can only be as exceptional as its people. Well, we have all kinds of health and wellness initiatives to keep us as healthy and well as we can be. Josh Wynn, Dean of the Medical School, has developed a program, Jogging with Josh. Marsha initiates the Ski with the Kellys, drags me along. We have activities for students. Our late night program is vibrant here in the Union. With uh, Tony Tremarco and others, we are developing a professional staff development program. We are developing programs for mid-career faculty to enhance and grow their careers. I hope all of you had a chance on Sunday to uh, participate with our university choral programs, celebrating the life of Mark Solberg developing an endowment for scholarships for students in his name. Can't tell you the beauty of the human voice, the flexibility and the uh, vibrance of voices combined together, <coughs> children's voices, all the way through to mature, very well-trained voices. Tremendous quality of life experience on this campus last Sunday afternoon. And I'm always impressed by our child care facility, uh, enhancing all of what we can do with our young families on this campus. So I believe we have just ex exceptional talent in this university. We have an exceptional commitment to our institution, and we have an exceptional group of people who make that commitment and bring all of this to our table. <clears throat> I want to show you a video about our newest building coming online. It's the education building. And in addition that I mentioned earlier, the 2009 legislature appropriated about $11.2 million. <clears throat> this was from federal, stim federal stimulus funds uh, to renovate and expand uh, UND's 56-year-old education building. I hope you'll join us for the dedication of that building on October 21st at 2. Uh, then we can all go together over to the party at the Alaris. It's an exceptional facility. So exceptional that I'm going to give you a glimpse of it now. But as you watch the short video, please keep in mind all of the exceptional UND priorities that I've just mentioned, because I think this video shows you exactly what it is that we're planning for the vision of this university. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's very comfortable. You know, it's warm. Just walking into a place like this where everything is new and vital and fresh is exhilarating. It's just beautiful. Outstanding. 
my professors are great. Between how they teach and just their their persona and their you know characteristics of themselves, it's all it all falls in line. What don't they do? You know, they they make you laugh, they make you think, they make you happy, sad. They help you really find yourself and put you in a direction that's healthy for you. I every day I feel like like really I'm looking forward to come to class. It's just I feel like I'm coming to my second home. This new technology that we have puts us back in that role as leaders and collaborators. The lecture bowls are incredible. The technology it's just really going to change the way our students learn and their enthusiasm for learning in such a comfortable environment. In between classes, I do sit in the lobby. It's very accommodating. There's plenty of seating space. And then the placement of the classrooms um, is better in this new design. Where offices are versus where classrooms are, it's much more cleanly designed. But the moment you enter the hallway of the offices, there's that bright, natural light coming in. And so, to me, there's a brightness and a lightness but I think it's uplifting. The vending machines in this building have water in them. We have a vending machine that has all kinds of healthy alternatives, breakfast bars and snacks that are more healthy. An additional part of the water station where if you take a reusable water cup and you put it up there and fills it up, you're not using any water bottles that are plastic, you're not um, letting any of those into a landfill and there's even a counter that says how many plastic bottles have been saved. So those are those are some small ways but we think symbolic and significant ways of promoting health. Typically faculty are housed in universities according to their department so they're all in the same building or the same wing or unit or something. We decided intentionally that we were going to not do that by mixing the different departments up in that way, it allows for us to interact with people with completely different research interests. So I think it's really going to promote cross-departmental research opportunities that we wouldn't have had before. We wanted this building to have a sense of place. That is, you're in North Dakota. No one ever thought we'd see this happen in our lifetime. Um, I took classes in, as an undergrad in the education building, and it's, it's just such an incredible change. That has been the most fun for me. Well, we have a long history of providing manipulatives, hands-on materials, supports, and resources that engage the mind, that the technology then becomes the true educational tool to support the learning. And I think that in that sense, that new technology enhances what already is a very strong program. Projects of this nature have so many people involved. I cannot thank everyone enough for the support for this project because now this is a tremendous asset to the University of North Dakota. I did mention that this building was federally funded. We appreciate the support of the North Dakota Legislature in funding this product, project using federal dollars that could have been used for some other building projects in the state. It is important to note, though, that one of our challenges now moving forward is our global economy, the U.S. economy, and especially the federal government's financial landscape. As I draw my comments to a close, I want to touch on a couple of challenges that face the university. I mentioned earlier that our revenue from research grants and contracts is in the $100 million per year range. The vast majority of that is in federal dollars through a combination of what we used to call earmarks and competitive grants. It's becoming increasingly clear, however, that our research funding will be affected in at least two significant ways. <clears throat> First Congress is changing its funding policies to exclude the earmarking process. This means that we need to do an even better job at something we already do pretty well, and that's connecting our research aspirations to the needs of this country. More so than ever before, a greater portion of the funding for research will flow through federal agencies, for example, the Department of Energy, the Department of Defense, the National Science Foundation, National Institutes of Health, and that means we need to do an even better job of connecting our research programs to the priorities of these federal agencies. 
At the same time, it continues to appear that may, there may be less funding for these agencies. There will be small, smaller funding pies to go around at a time when there will be more and more demand nationally. All of the universities that we compete with across the nation demands for these funds. Now this is a very real challenge already, and it's all the more reason why we need the critical support we get from the North Dakota legislature, as well as from you, our local community, and from our friends and alumni, and, while, and why we will need even stronger contributions going forward. Partnerships, collaborations, words you've heard me use many times before, including this talk, <clears throat> are becoming more and more important for the development of UND's laboratories, our teaching and learning spaces, clinics for professional training, and on and on. Now let me be very clear, the, the financial situation of the University of North Dakota is very strong. We are very happy to be in the financially healthiest state in the United States. But we are watching the global and US economies planning now for the potential changes that will come in the months ahead. Another challenge to the university is the ongoing discussion that continues to surround UND's Fighting Sioux name and logo. I'm certain that all of you know that House Bill 1263 was signed into law following the last legislative session. The law requires UND to retain the use of the name and logo. As you also know, the law countered the 2007 settlement agreement with the NCAA, which stipulated retirement of the name and logo if agreed upon conditions were not met. A delegation of state and university leaders met with the leadership of the NCAA in August of this year, and the NCAA was firm in their resolve not to provide an exception to UND regarding their rule about Native American names and imagery in NCAA-sponsored competition. Now, consequently, <clears throat> as of August 15th of this year, the UND Athletic Department is operating under NCAA sanctions. In the long run, these sanctions and the responses of other NCAA institutions to UND as a result of these sanctions will be detrimental to UND athletics. Conference affiliation will become increasingly problematic and scheduling, the recruitment of top athletes and the retention of top coaching staff will become harder and harder. In addition, I'm also very concerned about the national reputation of UND as a result of increased national media coverage of this issue. I think the reputation of the university has been diminished. Excessive emphasis on the name and logo issue has displaced national discussion of the excellent quality of UND's academic and research programs, and it has created a perception at the national level that UND's campus environment may, may not be as welcoming to all students as we would like for it to be perceived. So put simply, the cost to UND of retaining the Sioux name and logo is too high. Our athletic program will not succeed in the long run and UND's national reputation will suffer. It is my sincere hope that this law will be rescinded during the special session of the legislature in November to allow UND to move on through this difficult issue, to permit our students, our faculty, and our staff to become united around new opportunities rather than a continued division over an intractable situation, and to continue planning for the success of UND athletics at the NCAA Division I level. There are other challenges, but I'll save those for a later time. I am very optimistic for the University of North Dakota. We have an excellent leadership team in place. We have identified our top exceptional UND priorities. We're making progress towards their achievement. UND continues to think outside the box, to be creative, innovative, entrepreneurial in how we approach our challenges, and more importantly, how we approach our opportunities. North Dakota is in excellent financial shape, and so is the University of North Dakota. In so many ways, we have a great university. Together, let's build an exceptional UND. 
Thank you this morning for all of the support that you bring to this exceptional university.